Hey guys, it's Leanne, and a couple weeks ago, I had the great, great pleasure of sitting down with one of my Meetings Mean Business Canada Communication Committee colleagues, try saying that six times fast, MNBC's Teresa Gatto, who also works with Ottawa Tourism. And what I loved about this conversation with Teresa is I was able to catch her off guard. She prides herself on being scripted and planning things down to the minutia. But today's tea time chat was anything but that. And it allowed Teresa to really express herself and share her great, great passion for the meetings industry. So I do hope you enjoy my chat with Teresa. We do talk a lot about advocacy, the work of MNBC, what you can do to contribute to our great industry, and maybe some tips and tricks on how to get through this tumultuous time. So stick around for my chat with Teresa. So now, did you have to cancel any sun vacation plans because of COVID? So what we've been doing, we did cancel our vacation plans. We didn't have any major um, sun plans per se, but uh, last year we went to Shirks and Shores. So trying to find, you know, a place to go for, to keep my our nine-year-old occupied with lots of things to, to do. Uh, I'm sure you've got the same with, with your, your, your two boys, right? Two boys, yeah. yeah. Two boys as well. So uh, we did, and actually they called me because I think that they were very excited to get people to cancel, unfortunately, because they were overbooked. And oh. they they were still allowing people to go, I think, but they, they needed people to cancel in order to socially distance everybody. So we were scheduled to go, I think, at the end of, end of July, beginning of August. So they were still open. Um, but a lot of parts of their facility were closed. So we were okay to, to, to cancel this year, but we ended up uh, doing some additions to our, our backyard and uh, ended up staycationing in our, in our backyard, so. And how did you find that? Like, did you enjoy the experience of not being able to go anywhere, but actually stay in your hometown? Yes and no. I mean, it's, you know, not having, you know, the time frame to, to travel, you can just go into your backyard. Um, but you certainly miss the hustle and bustle of, you know, going out and, and, and being somewhere and experiencing something different and unique, right? So um, I love to travel personally, um, you know, did a lot of travel with work last year uh, in Europe and that kind of thing. So I think you really miss those experiences and, you know, your backyard vacation, staycations are okay. Um, you know, for this year, I think it'll do, but um, just being able to go out and meet new people too when you're, when you're out and about and, and traveling and, and experiencing new places. You know, um, so it's kind of timely because I was uh, on Facebook this morning on one of the event groups on there. And so Connect, which is a large gathering of event professionals and um, hotel partners in the US, they're meeting this week in Florida, I believe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 1000 people apparently at this Connect event, um, some people from my company, which is how I learned about it. Uh, and there's been a lot of pushback from event professionals about they weren't doing enough to protect people at the event. And so, so now I have to wonder, Teresa, I have to wonder if we start meeting and we almost get event shamed because we're attending events and, and the people now planning the events, are they going to be shamed if they don't do everything by the book to try and keep people safe? So I, I feel for event planners, I feel for the Connect team that's dealing with all of the feedback good, bad, and indifferent, because mm -hmm. um, all they wanted to do was bring people together too. And, and now there's so many in the community, um, yeah, basically saying it's an event fail, and which is like, devastating <laughs> for the events industry right now. We need event successes. Well, that's it. We, yeah, those, you know, we will have to do it right. You know what I mean? And I think that you know, it's been said, you know, a couple of different times that we're in a marathon, you know, this is, it's going to take time. We have to do it when the time is right. 
And, you know, we have to be able to demonstrate that we can meet safely. I mean, I think that onus is on us as an industry to be able to demonstrate that, but the timing does have to be right so that we are mindful of, of the optics around that because, you know, we all want everybody traveling again and we want the, the conferences to happen again. We want the hotels full, the convention center full. We all want that tomorrow, but that can't happen. There needs to be a little bit of a process and obviously a plan and a strategy behind how we make that happen moving forward. You know, I mean, I think what we have to maintain and what we need to continue doing is following public um, safety guidelines and the government and and really align ourselves, you know, with with what those restrictions are and what those safety protocols are. And, you know, that is very different right now between the US and Canada. Um, I think so we, we're executing things a little bit differently. And so we need to align ourselves and, and, and stay focused with that. And I think from an advocacy standpoint, what we need to be doing now is um, very similar to what MNBC is doing and having a seat at that table and, and like what Clark's presentation was to the House of Commons and, and just providing that education piece about um, having a seat at that table, about the importance of our industry and the advocacy and the economic impact to be able to have a seat at that table to help develop the policy so that when we are able to meet again, we, we are able to be part of what that policy is and help develop what those regulations are to so hopefully that we can get that um, sooner rather than later but it has to be done right it's not something that we can just rush into and do tomorrow um, but ensuring that we have a seat at that table I think is key right now to make sure that our industry is top of mind because it is is affecting so many um, businesses within our industry I think for a lot of us it's the hesitation to just get on a plane Whereas if we wanted to go to an event for you, if you wanted to go to an event at an Ottawa hotel, you trust in the hotel facility staff to take care of you. Like they're doing everything possible yeah. to keep you safe when you're within their doors. Yeah. Um, and you're just in your car, you're not in a plane. Well, perceptions is something, you know, that we always, we always struggle with, especially in our industry. You know, people think we're an industry of of party planners and mm -hmm. you know they don't realize exactly what it is that we do you know we try we've been talking about this for, for for years you know how do we get our messaging outside of our four walls we're very good at talking to ourselves so mm -hmm. how do we break past that perception and I think you know I remember saying uh, on, a, on one of the calls when we were talking about planning for uh, global meetings industry day this year so earlier on in the year when we were trying to determine how do we get our story and our message out there and how do we make it media worthy, right? So what's going to get people to pay attention to what it is that we're doing, that we are a $33 billion industry and we're, we maintain 229,000 jobs, right? How do we make that important to somebody outside of our four walls? Because we, we are all very passionate about that and we can talk about that. We know that. And so I remember saying on the call, you know, it's almost like we need to look at this backwards you know what happens if our industry did not exist what happens if the i hope i didn't jinx you know but what it's not your fault <laughs> right you know but what what would happen if business events didn't happen you know and who would be affected who would be out of work and it's unfortunate that unfortunate and a silver lining within this pandemic that this is something that is coming out and it's coming to the forefront is the impact of our industry and how important we are to employing and securing jobs in so many different people. The, uh, it's just the economic footprint of one delegate that goes to a conference. Like think about any conference that you've, you've been to. Right from the moment when you step out your front door, you're taking a taxi to get to the airport. Maybe you're buying a coffee or something at the concession at the airport while you're there. You're hopping onto the plane. You're getting into a taxi in the destination where you're at. You're shopping in the stores. You're staying in the hotels. You're eating the food at the convention center. So. It, it, in the supply chain within the convention centers and the hotels, they're, they're getting food from farmers. These are all people who are not, not providing those services right now because there's no demand for it because we don't have people coming into destinations for conference and events. So it's those connecting those dots for people that I think is a little bit of the silver lining right now with what's going on in our world is hopefully that people do realize that the housekeepers, the front staff, the concierge, none of those people are working right now mm -hmm. and they will be working again when we can demonstrate that we can meet safely and I think we all have a part to play in that. 
Can you just share a little bit about how people can and should be sharing their stories about people who are meeting face to face? Absolutely. You know, we've had um, some stories coming in, obviously, right now, um, depending on what the government regulations are in each individual province. Uh, right now, there isn't too much coming in from, from Ontario because of, of where our numbers are at. Um, but we have, you know, over the last uh, few weeks prior to, to the latest um, regulations coming through, you know, people have been sharing stories about how they're adapting and how they are, are doing things differently in the hotels or how they are monitoring um, and controlling, you know, how, how many people are going in uh, to venues at a time. Like if it was 100 people, like it was 100 people per hour that were able to go in or 50 per hour. Um, and so those stories have been shared to us and we're collecting those and we're sharing them now on our face, our, uh, all of our social media pages. Uh, we have a brand new uh, LinkedIn page for uh, MNBC as well. So please, everyone, follow along to keep uh, to to keep a, uh, abreast of of everything that's going on and what we are sharing. We are sharing those stories to help create awareness and education um, to everybody in our industry, without outside of our industry, but as well as, as hopefully government is able to um, see those as well as we tag you know tag those people into the conversation. Um, but the more, the more that we get those stories out there, the louder our voice is, the more that we ha are able to um, get that to the forefront so that um, we, we can demonstrate that we can meet safely again. You can share them at um, stories at meetingsmeetingbusinesscanada.ca. Perfect. And that link will also be in the YouTube description for this video. So if you're watching this on YouTube right now, jump down to the description and you'll find that submission address. It's also the goals and objectives of an in-person meeting itself. And I'm wondering if a spinoff from our current stories gathering campaign is a collection of stories of people who are seeing their organizations or seeing their mandates not meeting objectives because they couldn't meet face to face. That, that is food for thought. You don't have to answer. Yeah. But what, what would you think of that? Because that's got to be happening. If you're not meeting in person, I don't care if you're a dentist or if you're going to DeVos for the World Education or World um, Economic Forum, you're missing your goals. You're missing on your objectives. So where are those stories? And that is a very good point, you know, because, you know, like you're saying, beyond the economic impact, what we do what is bring people together. And what do we bring people together to do, right? We provide that platform, the venues, the hotels, it, to encourage that communication, right? And right now, you know, face-to-face -face isn't happening. And it, you cannot replace face-to-face -face and what happens in those interactions. You know, when you sit down, you're breaking bread with somebody, you're looking in their, in their eyes, you know, there, there's trust that is built with that, that is very different. I mean, even just you and I speaking right now virtually, you know, it feels different. It's not the same. It will do for now, but it's not the same, right? So we bring people together. And so when you think about, you know, the large corporate uh, groups that we work with, they come in to do product launches. Uh, they come in to, to, you know, hype up their team for the, the beginning of the year and get that kick started and, and, you know, share their goals, their objectives. That's their, part of their communication plan. So you're right. Those, those things, those messages aren't happening anymore. And is that same message being received in a virtual platform? we don't know that but that is a good a good thing for us perhaps to explore and i think clark alluded to this too on uh when he spoke on the illumina um podcast as well that that this is something that we that we need also need to consider mm -hmm. it's it the trend and i'm and we're calling it here mm -hmm. Teresa. the trend is um an extreme loss of intellectual capital because we're going to lose all of those, be it junior or senior sales managers and planners, we're losing them to other industries. So not only are we looking at the loss of intellectual capital, but almost a return to the 80s where everyone is junior again. And we're building up a brand new slew of CMPs and we're, we're, we're going to have to invest heavily in education to make sure that um, all of these 
typically younger people are, are coming into the industry armed with information, as opposed to when you and I started, um, well, at least for me, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, to roll you into this, but when I started back in the day, there was, wasn't those education programs. And so we all had to kind of go through the CMP program to get educated. Um, but all of that capital, all that intellectual capital, gone. It's all in other industries now. And good on us for an industry creating some cross-training where people like ourselves can maybe even get jobs in other industries, be it in operations or project management or, I mean, planners can do, planners can contact trace for a living. I mean, like we've got so many other options given the skill sets that we grow being in this industry. Um, but now the con is we're going to lose all of those people and hopefully there's enough money to bring them back. But well, and, and of course, I mean, and that's it. And, you know, hopefully they, they do come back and, you know, where there is an opportunity there, you know, trying to, you know, keep everything positive and trying to look at the bright side of things because there's always both sides. But, you know, perhaps there's, there's skill sets and, and things that people are learning if they are leaving the industry in the short term that they can bring another new fresh perspective or learn something new coming back into our industry that can only make us even better and stronger coming, coming out of this because we will come out of this. We, we will survive. Um, it may look different, but we will come out of this. And I was thinking too, back to um, a, like when you're talking about skill set and what it is that we do, like as an industry, you know, the planners in our industry are, are very good at risk management and thinking on their feet and coming up with solutions. We are a solution driven industry. And, you know, um, planners are, you know, they're, they're just so amazing and how quickly they can think and, and, you know, I'm sure you can speak from experience as well and, and resolve things on the spot and, and have control of things too. And I remember thinking back to a conference I attended um, in Seattle and I've seen this at other conferences too, but for some reason it really stood out to me in this particular conference. And I remember thinking, this planner has full control of where everybody enters the room, how they navigate through the exhibit space and where they exit. So that is something that we already have in our toolbox, in our industry that we do well. And we can apply that now to how we meet moving forward with the safety protocols, with the social distancing. We have control over that in working in partnership and collaboration with the venues and the hotels who are extremely open and flexible to having those conversations because we want people to meet again. We can do that. So it's up to us to demonstrate that and to show that, that, that we can do that safely. Well, and it's, it's, I'm so glad you used the word mass gathering because there was a mass gathering that was planned very safely not too, too long ago in Halifax. And I hope they don't mind me telling this story. The hockey team in Halifax, the Mooseheads had a game with 2,200 fans that were all uh, socially distanced so they could stay within their family cohort, but then socially distanced from all the other families and cohorts in the arena. Mm -hmm. And so I've been thinking about that one because that's a lot of people. And that is probably even more people than a, a good chunk of the conferences we host in Canada. Why can't we go to an arena? <laughs> I mean, they did it. They well, can get in trouble. Like, why can't we host a conference at Rogers Center? Well, and that's why we just thought <laughs> it is absolutely. And that's why we just need to continue having that seat at the table. And I think that that's what, you know, MNBC and TIAC and TIO and um, are having those conversations and they're doing a very good job at that. And it's just staying in the government's ear. And right now it's really the provincial government because they're the ones that are, 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 are giving out the, the, the regulations and, and scaling things back and moving things forward. So we want them to be aware of what it is that we do, what our know-how is, what our background is, what we've been doing for years and why we are good at it. And that is what needs to be the message that needs to continuously um, be hammered home. And I don't think it's just one time, you know, it has to come from a whole bunch of different angles. So for those people that are sitting at home wondering, okay, our industry is 
you know, it feels like it's falling apart right now. What can I do? How can I help? Well, you can, you have a voice, so let's use it. You are a very active person um, and you volunteer in a number of capacities. Um, you've been hit by the same pandemic that everyone else in the world has been hit by, uh, but you have a great energy and a great enthusiasm. And I'm wondering how, how you get through your day to day, how you take care of you so that you can give your best to everyone that you meet in a day. But I'm so addicted to volunteering. <laughs> And, and, and just getting involved and that honestly helps rejuvenate me a little bit too because it gives me a sense of belonging and a sense of purpose. I really enjoy being a part of something bigger than me and then working with people um, on things that are, are not self-serving for either one of us, right? So just being able to to be in the trenches and you know the business comes after that, right? Like the volunteering you're doing for a totally different different purpose and, and those relationships and friendships that I've developed over the years because of all of that, um, it, it's just, it's huge, right? And that becomes the support system too, right? So you have that support system um, within the industry as well and you have those additional friendships too. Yeah, you, you said it. I think volunteering <laughs> has more to do about relationships than it actually does about the work at hand, although we're all furthering the mandate of whatever we volunteer for, but you're right. It's about relationships. What I love the best is that, yeah, as much as you say yes to things, especially when it comes to volunteering and industry related things, <laughs> you also have the power and the ability to say no like you did to yeah, your son's yeah. teacher. And that's, yeah. I think that, that is what I'm going to take away from this as being my biggest tip is there are some things that we just need to say no to and make room for the things that will truly energize us and benefit us, right? But advocating for our industry is something I am so passionate about. And back from you know the time serving with the MPI Toronto Chapter Board, uh, I was actually part of uh, the Business Events Industry Coalition of Canada, which it was formerly Meetings Being yeah. Business Canada. Uh, and back in the day, uh, we were talking about, you know, organizing a GMA, I was, uh, what was it called back then? National Meetings Industry Day. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, so working, I, what I really liked about that was we were able to collaborate and bring all the industry associations together mm -hmm. because I, I very, very, um, convinced that you know nothing can be done anything really truly successful you don't do on your own there is a group of people that, that surround you that are with you to support you to collaborate and to think differently and it takes all those those thought leaders around a table in order to enact change so that was very appealing to me and i, I learned so much from all those industry leaders so I, I tried to stay, you know, I was able to be on the board at that time um, because of my, my, my MPI Toronto chapter role. Um, and then just tried to stay involved um, over the years uh, with MNBC uh, in an advocacy role because I believe in what we do so much and the impact that we have uh, on our industry, but also on so many other industries that don't even realize that they are actually in fact part of, part of our industry as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'm really trying to be present in, in, in the moment and what, in what's happening and, and, you know, looking ahead, you know, way far in the future, I see a light at the end of this tunnel. We will come out of this pandemic. Uh, we may look differently, but, uh, you know, everyone is um, using this time. I'm hoping people are using this time to learn new skills uh, and, and develop, uh, get new accreditations. I'm actually going to be uh, taking the uh, PCMA um, digital event strategist uh, course in a few weeks. I think that begins at the uh, beginning of November. And, and really to, to just, I've always wanted to just always get into the minds of our planners as well. And as a supplier, um, that was why I took my CMP course, uh, because I wanted to understand the things that, my, that the planners and clients that I'm working with what it is that they live and breathe on a day to day. So I wanted to understand that better. So that's the same mentality that I have with this course coming up is I want to understand that. And I love learning something new. So for me, I'm a huge advocate of professional development, learning new things. Um, so 
you know, really trying to, to see what courses are available internally at work. Uh, I'm working on, um, you know, work with different pro professional development opportunities internally as well. Um, for, for our entire for our entire team, we're working with HR on that. Um, just because this is the time, if we have a little bit more time, and then let's use that for self-improvement, because at the end of the day, that is only gonna help what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and help make our industry stronger overall. Thank you, Teresa. I enjoy your company so much, and I really enjoy working with you. And um, you and I are gonna talk lots in the weeks <laughs> ahead, um, but thank you for joining me today and for sharing your wisdom with with the audience. You're welcome. Have Thank a great you. day, everyone. Okay, Bye. take care. Bye-bye.